So on the 26th of January, we're expecting to see the first reviews show up for the RTX 3000 mobile graphics cards and the laptops that are going to support. And I think you guys are going to have to pay close attention to what the reviewers are going to be telling you. And that's just because allegedly Nvidia has decided to drop the Max-Q nomenclature. And that really feels weird and confusing, especially because we've seen them talk about Max-Q at CS 2021, which just happened, I guess, two weeks ago or something like that. And speaking of things being really confusing, about about the RTX 3000 mobile lineup. I have a dedicated video talking about it. So if you'd like to watch it, you can find it in the info cards above. But right now, I would just like to tell you that by dropping the Max-Q naming scheme, you're not really going to be able to tell whether you're getting a GPU that has a TDP of 60 or 80 watts. So that would be Max-Q. Or if you're getting something like 130 watts, which would be Max-P. Now, I know that some people are asking me, why am I using the Max-P naming scheme? Because this is not an official name from Nvidia. Well, they have used it in a slide and aside from that, it's because some laptop manufacturers like Electronix, XMG and some other brands do use the Max-P nomenclature just to show that they're talking about a GPU with a higher TDP. Now, what would the TDP do for you in this case? Well, if you have a an Acer Nitro 5 as an example, which is definitely going to have a Max-Q GPU and let's say the RTX 3080 because they are going to be putting an RTX 3080 inside the Acer Nitro 5 and that seems like well, let's say just that I don't expect it to perform really well, but I digress on that. Compare it to an Asus uh, Strix Scar 17, which we know that is going to have a 130 watt TDP because they've said that during their uh, live stream at CES. You're going to see that you're going to be getting very different results, and that's not going to be because of the CPU. Obviously, that could also influence the results a little bit in some titles, but trust me, the GPU is going to um, affect your gaming performance or any kind of other workloads that require your GPU as well um, and much more to to be fair so um Put it that way, you're going to get 80 watts on the uh, Acer Nitro 5 the RTX 3080 that they're going to have and battling against the Asus uh, Strix Scar 17 with 130 watts or maybe 150 if you're going to go for some other combination or if you're going to increase the TDP uh, with uh, Dynamic Boost 2.0, uh, which is something that I'm probably going to be discussing about in another video. Otherwise, you're going to find some links to that in the video description down below. Now, um, why is TDP so important? Well, it's just because you're going to start seeing some different uh, boost clock frequencies and you might also see some higher temperatures on the ones that are going to have a 130 watts or 140 or 150. Uh, but I guess some people um, can get some laptops that have some really good cooling systems and they're not really going to mind that. So that would be a very basic explanation. If you're interested in learning more about that, then again, check out the links in the video description or watch some other videos from other reviewers because it's only so much that I can discuss in those videos. Otherwise, I guess you could leave some comments. But I just wanted to say that Nvidia is really not going into the right direction with all of these moves that it's um, taking, I guess. And we've also seen them, and I'm going on another topic right now from um, some previous videos that I've done this week. They're also going to be bringing back the mining cards, and they are also um, working on not releasing an RTX 3060 FE. Instead, they're going to give, be giving that only to AAB partner. So we're definitely going to see some price increases um, in the uh, desktop GPU side of things, but I kind of suspect that this is going to be happening to laptops as well. So definitely be aware of all of those things. And like I said, pay close attention to reviewers like uh, Jared from Jared's Tech, Steven from Owner Disown, Bob from Bob of All Trades, uh, Gizmo, Sliptech, and some other uh, laptop reviewers that I'm going to be linking in the video description down below. And hopefully I'm also going to have some reviews for you guys from uh, some laptops that maybe I will be getting. I've been in contact with some companies. so. Um, Fingers crossed that I'm going to be able to get my hands on some laptops. But now I would like to also tell you more about something that it's a little bit better. So we're going to be talking about the 5900HX. Um, and we have seen this one being presented very nicely during CES 2021, during AMD's presentation. And, and uh, just to quote Steven from uh, uh, Gamers Nexus, and I guess uh, paraphrase him, it would have been way more interesting to have a PDF because their whole presentation uh, took like 50 minutes and 
they really just gave themselves a really nice pat on the back during the whole event. Now, what I wanted to say about the 5900HX is that uh, we have seen it being on the top of the leaderboard for Passmark. So that is really cool because this means that it's going to be way better than the 10980HK from Intel. And just to tell you the results, we've seen it being able to score over 24,000 points in multi-thread workloads, which again puts it at a solid uh, advantage against the Intel 10980HK. And it's almost like AMD really likes their cores and threads. <laughs> you know, Francois, you sound like you love cores and threads just as much as I do. And yes, uh, that was also something that has happened during CES 2021, but let's also talk about the single core performance because if you guys are interested in buying a laptop for gaming, that is going to be important. Now, we have seen some decent results coming out of that as well, and by that I mean nearly 3,400 points, which represents a 13% lead over the 10900HK, so expect to get some really good um, frames in the in pretty much every games that you're going to be playing, and I really hope that we're going to only be seeing this with the RTX 3070 and 3080 because that again is going to uh, really improve the experience that you're going to be getting out of these laptops. Now this is also not to say that the 5900HS and the 5900H are not going to be good because they are but if you want to learn more about the CPUs then I would recommend you check out some other videos that I made on my channel and as a last thing I guess because if you're only looking at mobile CPUs you don't get a good idea of um, how they come compared to the desktop CPUs. With regards to that, I can tell you that the 5900HX is going to be very similar in terms of uh, multi-core performance to the 10900K from Intel and very similar in single core performance to the Ryzen 5600X and I really think that this is a really big step that AMD is taking and I really hope that availability is going to be a little bit better for these um, laptops as compared to what we've seen on the desktop side of things with both the CPUs and GPUs from AMD and not only from them obviously. Now we're also going to be seeing the 5980HX at some point and I really think that that might happen in Q2 of 2021, but if that is going to happen, I really hope that they're also going to be pairing it with an RDNA 2 based GPU, so something like a 6700M, because we haven't seen AMD talk about it that much. Uh, at CS 2021, they just, I think they talked about it for like 20 seconds, if not less. So whether these are going to be really good, I don't know. We're going to find out more about that. And I do have a video where I was talking about the RX 6000 mobile lineup. So if you're interested in watching that, then definitely check out the links in the info cards above. And um, what else can I tell you? At the end of the month, I'll most probably be hosting a live stream together with Owner Disown, Bob of All Trades, and maybe some other um, laptop content creators. So if you guys have questions about that, then definitely post them in the comment section down below and if you are interested in learning more about the next generation laptops then definitely go and watch some videos that I made or the, the people that I just mentioned in this video or in the video description. So um, thanks a lot you guys for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Bye bye!